Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha Television. I am Akhilesh Suman and you are watching Indian Standard Time. Indian Standard Time is a window to the world through which we try to understand a particular country, its economy, its culture, its society, its international relations and indeed its uh, relations with India too. And guest of honor today is Nikolai Kudasev, Excellency the Ambassador of Russia in India. Thank you. Welcome Ambassador. Thank you very much. Uh, Ambassador, when any Indian talk about Russia, it's a really a great passion, great emotion flow between the hearts of two countries, people of the two countries. So how do you think, how it became possible between the two countries? As far as Russia and India are concerned, this is a very nice question. Uh, this is about common history. This is about common convictions. This is about bilateral sympathy which lies deep, deep in our hearts, but it is also about our common worldview, our dedication to free, democratic, multipolar uh, world based upon respect to international law right. and central and coordinative role in, of the United Nations in world affairs. That's, that's how I feel about it, sir. So, Excellency, you are, I think, one of the diplomats here in Delhi who is the uh, longest serving diplomat, I think. Uh, so, what uh, makes you be present here for so long time? Do you like India or it is just a professional thing that you are here or it is something else? So, this is definitely a combination of the two. Well, on, on the one part of it, this is, my, this is my duty, this is my service. Right. But on, the other, but on the other part of it, I first came here in 1999 and I spent, spent my first posting, posting of six years here in India. I came to know some of this country and I came to love this country and which is most gratifying of my stay in India is that your effort would bear fruit in your lifetime. Right, sir. Uh, it's a complicated world today, you know, that uh, as you were telling that multipolar world uh, both is, India sir. and Russia are it striving is, for. Uh, but there was a time when there was just two poles in the whole world, uh, one is uh, Russia and other is USA. Now, in this uh, changing world situation, how India and Russia are working together so that uh, multipolar world can really be established? Or it will become again a bipolar world like uh, China and USA? So, well, uh, Moscow and New Delhi, Russia and India are working a lot to secure this multipolar tendency in the emerging layout, if right, I may. Right. Like we are closely cooperating to strengthen the central position of the United Nations nice. in the uh, in the global in the global order. We are closely we are closely cooperating to secure norms and rules of international law, making this world predictable, right. safe and predictable. We are also closely cooperating to update the United Nations, uh, Nations organization to, to make it more effective in the changing times. Right. We are also, but we are also closely cooperating in newly emerging formats like RIC, Russia, India, China, right. BRICS, Shanghai Cooperation Organization to develop a new model, a new just and equitable model, model of international relations. We are also in close dialogue at, upon emerging regional architecture in the in the basins of in the basins of Pacific Ocean and then the basin and the Indian Ocean and we are also cooperating on making this immense continent Eurasia still closer and more predictable within the idea larger vision of bigger Eurasian partnership offered by president of the Russian Federation Vladimir Putin recently uh, right, sir, as you told that, you know, India and Russia are working together on the United Nations also, various fora of United Nations. But there is one issue that uh, Russia, though, has always supported uh, India's candidature for permanent membership in the United Nations Security Council. But what do you think, uh, what is the impediment in uh, reforming the Security Council? Sir, uh, uh, how should I say it? Well, Russia supported, right. Russia supports and Russia will support right. India as a strong candidate for the membership in the United Nations Security Council. What matters in our take, and there is no denial on the Indian side either, right. is building consensus 
within the United Nations Nations Organization right. to make the UN reform rather a source of strengthening the, the United Nations Nations Organization than a vehicle of undermining it. Right, sir. In BRICS, uh, you know, India and China are working together. Russia is there also. But the type of uh, competition or you can say the type of differences in opinion on various world matters is there between India and China. Do you think that the BRICS uh, future is uh, uh, well in that situation? I am com completely convinced that the, uh, there is a bright future for BRICS. As far as the relationship, uh, the relations between India and China are concerned, this is not in the, if I may, this is not in the habit of Russian diplomacy as well as Indian diplomacy to comment on other countries, countries ties, but to put it briefly, uh, there could be differences between countries. Right. But uh, th there are many points of convergence right. between Russia, India, Russia, China, Ch China and India. And this is, and this is the dominating tendency in right. my take. This is what makes BRICS so attractive as a new model of intergovernmental, of intergovernmental relations. So, do you feel sometimes, does Russia feel sometimes that uh, there should be more convergence between India and China on various international issues Definitely than it sir. is? Definitely, sir. This is our sincere, sincere expectation, sir. These are two huge countries, right. two ancient countries. The two countries playing defining role for global stability and global development. Right. And naturally, the more uh, there is a dialogue and understanding between Beijing and New Delhi, China, China and India, the better. The more uh, there is an understanding, there is of an understanding in Russia, India, China, for China, yeah, for so, so still, that's, uh, that's still better it is. <laughs> uh, that's what I was coming on, that uh, when you were sitting in Russia, India, China dialogue, uh, does Russia try to, you know, uh, persuade both India and China to, you know, minimize the differences and try to maximize the convergences? Uh, Sir, so one should tread cautiously. India and China are independent right. and, and very clever states. Uh, we do, naturally, we do not interfere into right. your bilateral relations, right. in relations with, with Beijing, with China, but we are most supportive in any way and in any case of enhanced dialogue, enhanced interconnection between, uh, between India and China. This is our continuous position. Why I am asking this question? Because we have seen the fate of SARC. SARC has been started in this region with very big ambition that these South Asian nations will cooperate. But uh, when uh, there was difference between India and Pakistan on uh, various issues and one of the prime factors was terrorism, SARC is not functioning. So, in the same way, I, I was asking that uh, once India and Pakistan have joined SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, both are there again. Do you think that SCO may also be impacted the way SARC was impacted? So, I don't, uh, well, uh, Russia would not belong to SARC. Yeah. So, so I would, I could sound only hypothetical. What I could say is that the experience of India's membership and the Pakistan's membership in SCO is successful, sir, in yeah. my take. This is uh, a body, this is a structure wh whose authority hmm. is growing. Uh, and uh, the countries of SCO, they would cooperate successfully on many issues, hmm. be it uh, the, 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 the issues of global stability, non-proliferation, be it especially the issues of fighting or facing together new challenges and threats, be it the issues of economic cooperation, humanitarian contact, mm. and many, and you name it, sir. Mm. Uh, differences are differences, but the sides learn the lessons how to cope with All them. Right. Thus, maybe, sir, mm. I repeat that Russia is not a party to SARC, but maybe the experience being accumulated step by step on the, within the SCO platform could be emulated within the within the SARC platform either, and maybe in a way, in a way, the idea of larger Eurasian partnership proposed, offered by President Putin for consideration, right. could be a source of inspiration for such process. Th that's where I would prefer to stop. 
Uh, it's uh, really interesting that Russia is one country that is there in BRICS also, that is there in RIC also, that is there in SCO also, and in along with India. Yes, so Russia becomes somehow or other focal point between India, Pakistan, China. So do you feel sometimes burdened with these issues between India and China, issues between India and Pakistan? There is no burden for us yeah. because after all we are neighboring states. We do populate the same, the same continent and this is our sacred, a sacred obligation to promote peace, development and cooperation within this, within this continent. Whenever we feel we could be helpful, we are there. That's rest, uh, rest assured. Burden, I would not say, sir, there is much of a burden. Concern, uh, our desire to contribute, our desire to support the positive developments, it is there. But Why? it could not be named the burdens. Many times people feel that after collapse of USSR, India and Russia will go away because of uh, India's needs had uh, changed because Russia might not be fulfilling the needs uh, that India might be having. But uh, it was wrong. India and Russia came together again. So recently, after Prime Minister Nayan Modi came to power, there are two many uh, two striking things came into being. One is look is to a change into activist, and then Prime Minister Nayan Modi articulated, uh, you know, principle of Indo-Pacific. So India and Russia being very close very special privileged partners. Do you have any uh, understanding about Indo-Pacific, what India says, is it right, is it wrong, or you have some differences about it? Well, so how, how should I say, this is a matter for discussion. Yeah. This, uh, this is a matter for intensive dialogue. Right. And this dialogue is ongoing between Moscow and New Delhi, between, between Russia, uh, Russia and India. Well, uh, India belongs, uh, belongs uh, to the Indian Ocean. And we st study carefully uh, the, uh, Prime Minister, the, the Prime Minister Modi's initiatives for, 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 uh, for the Indian Ocean and for the Pacific Ocean. Right. If you would ask me what is the, the matter of our concern, right. the matter of our concern are the so-called Indo-Pacific strategies, a region of an extra-regional nature, right. originating uh, any other place, like be it, be it Washington, be it even Tokyo or Canberra. Right, sir. Yes, we are suspicious. We are suspicious about them. How to manage this situation is precisely a matter, a matter of dialogue. Uh, but uh, when you tell the word suspicion, what is the suspicion about? Uh, there is a strong reason to, reason to believe that certain Western, a okay. certain Atlantic or Western Indo-Pacific st strategies uh, are being uh, promoted with the sole purpose to revive the bondage, the heritage of the, of the Cold War, mm. to isolate certain countries, like for example Russia or like China, mm. and to see discord within the, within the Eura Eurasian space. Uh, you please trust me, after all, the origin of the so-called Indo-Pacific strategies and the origin of the uh, strategies encouraging NATO's expansion, right. the origin of the uh, strategies encouraging subversion of the global stability, mm. like remember the fate of the INF Treaty, this, they are of the same origin. Right. They would originate in the same place and it is hard to, uh, to believe that they are of different nature. That's the reason for our suspicion, a very clear one, please. Yes, sir. but uh, when we come about uh, this issue, something is happening in South China Sea area and uh, many countries in the world are objecting the way China is behaving in this area. So India was also suspicious about the intentions of China that whether it will be just stopping in South China Sea or this type of attitude will expand in other areas of Indo-Pacific. So in dialogue uh, between India and Russia, uh, has it figured the situation of South China Sea? Well, we are not a party to the disputes in the, Ch right. in, in the South China Sea. Right. We would welcome all the issues, uh, as far as the South China Sea is concerned, we would welcome all the issues to be negotiated uh, well, between the parties concerned without any formal interference. Right, sir. We welcome the emergence of the, of the, uh, of the de declaration on the Code of Conduct and the Code of Conduct as such. 
So uh, we are actually witnessing a new era of Indian foreign policy. Definitely. So. Where Indian foreign policy is trying to push it forward. Definitely. A bit, you can say that a bit uh, more aggressive than it was earlier. Please. And sir. that is why it is Act Asia. That is why it is uh, Indo-Pacific. And again, in, uh, in between came Quad. And Quad was also a new phenomena, though it is not a very formal structure, but Quad uh, meeting is regularly taking place. So, uh, do you think that Quad also imposes the same type of suspicion in your mind as, uh, you know, Indo-Pacific thing? As far as Quad is concerned, you know, uh, there is no suspicion as far as India's poli politics is concerned. Right. But as far as the other parts, right. the, the, reason the participants are concerned, there, there is one, sir. Right, sir. Why is it? Uh, uh, I've already mentioned that uh, well, our position, I've, I've already sounded our position upon the in the, in the so-called Indo-Pacific strategies. Uh, they would, to a large extent, yeah. they would originate from the countries belonging to this, to this vague structure. Right, sir. Yes, we are suspicious. That's why we are suspicious about it. While in our take, there are time-tested and reliable structures already present there in Asia and the Pacific, like, for example, uh, ASEAN-centric mechanisms, uh, East Asian Summit, hmm. ASEAN Regional Forum, even APEC, where India is not a party yet, but where India will be a party in our take, we are convinced, and many others, like SCO, uh, like SCO, like, and you name it, sir. Why don't uh, we give a preference to these time-tested structures? This is our point of view, friendly one, sir. Uh, but uh, when we talk about, you know, India's uh, position, uh, some may question that uh, whether India is drifting towards USA, whether India is going much closer to USA. So, have you expressed uh, any time in the past uh, or do you think to express any time in the future that India's closeness to USA might be uh, uh, bad for India-Russia relationship? Well, first and foremost, we are satisfied and we are gratified with our growing relationship with India. As far as your relationship uh, uh, with the United States uh, is concerned, there are concerned the relations. I'm not supposed to lecture you upon the, the way to do, to, to, to do your business. Uh, as far as we are concerned, yes, yes, we are doubtful, we are somewhat suspicious about certain and many aspects of the United States, of the United States policies, anti-Russian sanctions included. Right. Need, needless to explain. Yes, we do sensitize our Indian, our Indian friends and partners upon the issues and matters of our concern, and I would prefer to leave it at that. Russia is uh, in United Nations Security Council. Why Russia does not raise the question of this whole sanction politics that is going on in the world? One country is stands up one day and says that, yes, I am putting sanctions against you. So Sir, this is I dare to say that you, I dare, I dare to recommend you to visit the website of Russia's permanent mission to the United Nations and see the deliveries of our, of our permanent representative, Mr. Vasily Nebenzia, or which is much closer and easier to visit the website of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia and see the deliveries, the speeches of our foreign minister, Mr. Sergei Lavrov, a very respected personality. You, you could see that in every second delivery, in every second speech, the issues of securing better world order, the issues of securing the authority the supremacy of the United Nations, right. the issues of supremacy of international law is being addressed, as well as the, issue, uh, the, the issues of non-use of sanctions. Hmm. So it is there. We are sir, very vocal on this point. Uh, 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 let's come to our bilateral relations. Please, sir. Uh, you know, India and Russia are known for having very good defense ties. Yes, sir. Uh, what is new in this defense ties? Anything new that is coming to India-Russia defense relations? Well, sir, uh, uh, our military and technical ties would last for almost 60 years, 60 to 70 years. Right, right. This is a very long tradition. This is a tradition which already belongs to generations. Yeah. Uh, we are effectively a part of bilateral security. Right. India is a part of Russia's security. Russia is a part of India's security. Well, uh, the co cooperation is 
developing successfully. To testify to it is the are the outcomes of the recent Defense Expo right, 2020 sir. in Lucknow, right, where a sizable Russian delegation was was present. Sir. What is currently in the offing? Well, uh, serious contracts are being implemented, like the S-400 uh, well, air defense or anti-ballistic <laughs> defense, uh, defense system, Russian frigates 11356 project. Uh, we are working upon many, many other agreements and understandings, uh, but what is so special about it is that uh, the special feature is that, uh, you, you know, uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's government is introducing a, a quite a new scheme, the Make in India, the Make right. in India idea. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was coming uh, to right, that. Right, sir. Yeah. So, uh, are we going to see something new in Make in India? Yes, sir, definitely, very much so. Uh, when we talk about uh, frigates uh, project eleven three five six, the two of them will be uh, will be done in Russia, but two of them will be done in India completely. Right. From zero, from zero, from, from zero, sir. When we talk about CAMOF 226T helicopters, the, level, uh, the levels of localization, well, uh, beginning with 70%, the levels of localization would grow further, sir. Yes, sir. And this is also the case for other, for other types of armaments to be produced or assembled, or assembled in India. In a way, some, in a way Russia, uh, is proud of being the first country of introducing the, uh, the assemble in India or, or, or make in India into our bilateral practice some, believe me, 40 years ago. One of the major things that perturbs everyone that India-Russia relationship is so well, so good, but it does not go beyond, uh, you know, defense ties. It is always bracketed in the defense ties. What is the impediment in the growing the relationship in other areas? I mean, trade, trade and economy. Well, Suman, I would say that th that uh, it is not really a correct evaluation of the state of our, of our relationships. Right. Uh, well, definitely, uh, military and technical relationship is one of the backbones of our ties, and we are proud of it. Right. We are proud contributors to Indian secu security, and we are proud that we could depend on India as our close partner, strategic yes. partner. Yes, sir. And this year we celebrate this, the 20th anniversary of our bilateral strategic partnership. But Very our trade and economy in other areas are not growing. So, well, uh, let, me continue, let me continue, but otherwise, aside of the military and technical ties, we've got growing cooperation, where? In space. Russia is a willing contributor, uh, contributor to the man, manned space, Indian manned space flight program. Right. Be it the Gaganyan project, or be it the orbital space station, or whatever. This is a, the, this is a very sizable project. Russia is uh, a willing contributor to Indian energy security. It is not only about atomic energy, nuclear energy. It is also about oil. It is also about gas. It's about, it's about coal. Very recently, our Director General President of Rosneft, Russian oil company, Mr. Igor Sechin, was here. He's done the sizable contract for 2 million tons of Russian oil to be supplied to India for the year 2020 only. Okay. I could go, so oil, coal and gas. Well, then comes uh, so infrastructure. We are willing contributor to solutions of Indian connectivity, connectivity issues, like our Russian railways, uh, RZD right. company, is a part of the upgrade of the Nagpur Se 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 Secundarabad Speedway and they, and they are looking for other solutions. So, quite frankly, I could continue, I could go on and on and on. This is an endless story. Yes. Not, only, not only about military and technical, but if you would say, uh, but if you would ask me whether there are any problems, yes, sir. We are looking, the base of our bilateral trade and economic ties is still underdeveloped. Like, we used to, uh, to, to uh, talk about Russia's majors, hmm. like Rosneft, like, like Rostec, like Rosoboron Export, like Roscosmos, and others coming to India. But what about, thou, uh, but what about multiple Russia's regions coming to India? 
And what about multiple Rus India's regions coming to Russia? Uh, Prime Minister Modi and President Putin had talked in Vladivostok and India announced a $1 billion line of credit to Russia Far East. What is the development on this uh, issue? Whether we are going forward on that? As far as the uh, line of credit is concerned, you, you, you mentioned it. So yes, it's a very attractive offer. And the two sides, the professional, the businessmen, the financial people, they, they are currently actively discussing, debating it. Right. So do you think that um, uh, in coming days we will see that uh, Indian agriculture industries, they will be going to Vladivostok definitely, in the sir. Far East? Definitely, region. sir. De because definitely. You are welcome, sir. When you are a diplomat, you are under great stress, various types of works are there. And when you are not on your diplomatic task, how do you ease yourself? Do you have any soft side of your personality that you spend time in that? Well, sir, I agree with you in general, though I would uh, just uh, express my personal well, uh, point of view that India is a very friendly country. Right. Thus, it is not much of a stress here. Right. Like, uh, <laughs> quite frankly, sir, right. let's put it this way. But naturally, well, uh, human is not only, uh, the human being is not, un, is not only after its business. After its business, there is something else in life also right. to, be offered, uh, to be offered to a man. I like reading, I like uh, arts, Indian arts included, I like uh, making photos. India is, a, India is a fertile ground for, uh, for each and every person who is involved with photography. So basically this is a very f friendly and a very open-minded environment for, for us, for Russians, and it's a pleasant stay. Officially and personally. That's uh, really interesting, sir. But uh, my last question will be, you are like a continuation from Soviet era to nowadays. So how do you feel the change in your own diplomacy practice from Soviet era to now? Well, sir, what I should say is that uh, uh, what is so special of the new period, of the new se season in our relationship? Yes, the Soviet period uh, laid the ground for laid the ground and created the huge infrastructure of bilateral relationship mm. between Russia, Russia and India. What's so special of the new of the new period of the new season is that it opened the doors to participate in the development of our bilateral ties for quite for new newly emerging social social strata be it businessmen, be it India's middle class, be, be it academics. That's why it made the scope of participants of relationship bigger. Right. And finally made the basis of our relationship stronger. Right. And that's what makes me optimistic about, its, uh, about the future of our ties. Thank you so much, Ambassador, for Thank talking so to us. Thank you so much, I'm honored.